Men have always feared the strange and sinister appearing creatures that inhabit the ocean deeps. Often wrongly, often through ignorance, but often rightly too. A man wrapped in the tentacles of an octopus fighting for his life has no time to remember that the octopus is reputedly one of the gentlest creatures in the sea. This one wasn't. In this strange lagoon, all the rules work backwards. Weird forms of life threatened any human being who dared to invade it. This man fought a losing battle against a creature which had no right to attack him. On the surface, the lagoon seemed peaceful and tranquil. The tropical beach appeared to promise no surprises. But underwater, it was a strange and rare environment, a challenge to the imagination of the most experienced oceanographer. I'm Mike Nelson. I was in charge of underwater operations for a four-man expedition seeking rare specimens in this natural laboratory. My partner and I had done pretty well on our dive. We brought up some never-before-identified fish for our aquarium. My buddy was happy. He had a right to be. Professor Dean Austin, a marine biologist, was making out all right on this expedition. His professional stature would rise considerably as the result. Dean's fiancée, Betty Raynard, a photographer for View magazine, was the third member of our party. Her diving buddy was a Tahitian, Andre Villard. Where's Andre? I don't see him. Neither do I. Oh, he'll be coming along pretty soon. Well, you were working together. Why didn't he come up when you did? Well, the fish he was chasing went down in a canyon, and if I'd gone with him, I'd have lost mine. Once you get locked in on a picture, you don't see anything else, do you? You can, if you want to get a good picture. There are other things in life, dear. I know. You're not worried about him, are you? He's a good diver. Well, even so, that lagoon's no place for solo diving. You better go look for him. I was more worried than I sounded. I had seen enough of the dangerous life in this topsy-turvy lagoon to have a premonition. And I was angrier with Betty than I showed. Leaving her partner underwater was a violation of the basic rules, and riskier here than most places. That's why I insisted that all three of us go together now. We headed for the area where Betty had last seen Andre. Even now, I was struck by the curious contrasts in these waters. Near the shore, the water was warm and tropical. But as we headed over a ridge, we hit cold water currents. And the terrain changed dramatically. It was as if we were swimming into another world. These anemone had no business in tropical latitudes. Dean's theory was that a submarine cataclysm or volcanic action had caused a deep water upwelling. Strange sea life had been swept up from great depths.
Betty was the first to spot Andre. I went after him. I didn't know whether he was alive or dead until I tried to force air into his mouth. Finally, I knew. I took Andre to the nearest town. We had no idea as to the cause of his death. So I waited there for the coroner's report. In the meantime, Betty was suffering strong feelings of guilt. I appreciate it, Dean. Really, I do. But you can carry gallantry too far. What happened was my fault. Not yours. I'm not being gallant. Much as I love you, I... I can't imagine why I'm not your type at all. Maybe that's why. But I'm not going to have you blaming yourself for Andre's death. Getting him to join this expedition was my idea. But Mike teamed him up with me. I know accidents happen any time. But if I just stayed with him, maybe it wouldn't have. The wounds on his body weren't accidental. They were made by some kind of creature. It's a lucky thing you didn't stay with him. But you haven't any proof that Andre was attacked. Maybe I do have. I'm right, we're through diving in this lagoon. Oh, no, this is the greatest spot in the world for an underwater photographer. I can't quit now. Well, you'll just have to. Mike, what'd you find out? The autopsy show anything unusual? Death by drowning, the coroner calls it. But you don't agree. Well, he was drowned, all right. What about those marks on his neck and on his face? Dean thinks they were made by some kind of creature. Oh, you do, huh? What kind? Large octopus or squid. Their suction disc would leave marks like that. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I don't know, Dean. I've had a lock to pie in the North Pacific. Good sized ones. Never had too much trouble with them. Well, I know you have, but life in this lagoon is different, more vicious. I put a little octopus in this tank, a baby one. And every time I put my hand on that water, he jumped for it. Hmm. I hate to sound cold-blooded, but if Andre was killed by a big addition of Dean's baby monster, I've just got to get pictures of it. But you're not going to get pictures because we're packing up and getting out of here. But, Dean, you don't have all of your specimens yet. Well, that's true, and I'd like very much to continue collecting them with Mike. And I think we could without too much danger, but the risk of losing you is too great. You haven't sense enough to be afraid. You think it's sensible to be afraid? I don't. This expedition could make history. I think it's very foolish to call it off because you're afraid for my safety. I don't blame him, Betty. He just wants you to stay alive long enough so he can marry him. When you get interested in the picture, brother. I assure you, I want to stay alive long enough to marry Dean, too. Darling. Suppose I faithfully promise to stay inside all of the time. What do you think, Mike? Well, those marks could have been made after Andre was drowned. That's possible. We'll never know if we quit now. You win again. Okay, let's get wet. that Dean would remain at a central point 
and the other two of us would keep within range of his vision. Almost immediately, I saw an interesting cold water fish. Betty was on her way after another specimen. Dean tried to keep both Betty and me in sight. Betty was having trouble getting close enough for a good shot. Now she saw another strange fish and headed after it. Betty was getting too far away. Dean decided that he'd better go after her. Betty shook Dean off. She was determined to get her picture, and once more forgetting all the rules we'd laid down. I had lost my specimen, and I suddenly realized I'd gone farther than I intended. I started back to our rendezvous point. Betty and Dean were gone. Not even their bubbles were in sight. Maybe they had surfaced. Or if not, maybe I could spot their bubbles on the surface. <laughs> Dean's blood went cold. The octopus was moving forward to attack. octopus is not supposed to attack man, but the creatures swept up from the deep in this lagoon were a new breed. Dean was trying to get Betty away from it to safety, but she wanted her picture so badly that he had to pull her away by force. In the meantime, I was trying to locate their bubbles on the surface. I couldn't. I went back down for another look around on the water. And that way, I just missed them. Why did you do that? In another second, I would have had that picture. In another second, that octopus would have had you. He wasn't moving in that fast. I could have snapped the picture and gotten away. Do you want to get yourself killed? I'm not going to let you go back. Now, leave me alone. I'm going to get that picture.
they hadn't returned to our rendezvous. There was nothing to do but continue my search. Unfortunately, I didn't find them soon enough. This time, Dean held his breath and let Betty try to get her picture. Betty backed away cautiously, her eyes still on the octopus. Her next step was fatal. Dean fired and missed. He didn't hesitate. Protecting Betty was the only thing he cared about. He rushed the octopus. Betty was finally free, but she was so paralyzed with fear she didn't even think of her camera. Dean was fighting a ghastly losing battle, and all the time I was a couple of hundred yards away, still searching. Octopi weren't the only frightening creatures down here. When Betty saw the snake, her paralysis snapped. She had only one idea. Get away. Again, I searched the surface, hoping for a telltale sign of bubbles. Finally, I saw them. Betty was swimming to the surface when I saw her. Where was Dean, I wondered. Betty showed me. I never got the chance to help him, for suddenly there was another of these vicious giants. And this time I was the chosen victim. couldn't get a decent grip on him. It was my two arms against his eight. The tentacles were tough as steel, and the suction cups clung with a grip of death. The slashing beak nipped viciously at me. I fought with all my strength, knowing that this was life or death for sure. Finally, I got a hand free and reached for my knife. I slashed and slashed again and again. I couldn't find a vital spot. The creature's body absorbed the blows and I didn't even draw blood. I was tiring.
recovering fast. Then, from way back in my memory, came the recollection of a trick used by skin divers in Puget Sound. I got my hand into the gill of the octopus, held it there, and shook with all my strength. That stopped its breathing as effectively as if I had choked it to death. At last, it stopped fighting. Now, finally, I could look around for Dean. There he was, on the bottom. His attacker had moved off, leaving him for dead. in bad shape by the time we got him ashore. Betty applied mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation while I tried to restore his heartbeat with a closed heart massage. For a while, it didn't look as if we could bring him back to life. Breathe. Any pulse? No. Breathe. 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 He's breathing. Dean? Thank you, and you're safe. I was afraid you'd go back for another picture. I threw the camera away. What? Huh? Get that light, Mama. Let's keep walking. Uh. Uh. Here. It was horrible, Mike. That thing was like a gob of glue with the muscles. I'll talk. I, I, I fought with him till I blacked out, but I, I couldn't pull him off. He was gone when I got there. Take it easy now, will you? Don't talk. I, I'm glad you didn't have to tangle with him, too. He had to kill one to get to you. Well, how, how in the world did you do it? Thanks, Mike. Now, about that camera. You didn't really throw it away, did you? Like Mike says, when I lock in on a camera, I can't see anything else. Not even the most important thing in the world to me. You, Dean. You mean, after all I went through to get that picture, you threw it away? Oh, well, Mike, looks like we'll just have to go back in after it. No, did you hear what I said? I won't let you take any more chances. That's right. At least keep him alive long enough for him to marry. Come on. Oh. What is that right? Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is fun and adventure for young and old, but it can be dangerous. So know the sport well and don't take any chances. Be with you next week for another exciting sea hunt.